Howdy boys and girls, this is Mrs. Dunn. Today we are going to be talking about multiplying and dividing fractions. Hopefully you already have this foldable in your interactive notebook. Multiplying and dividing fractions I think is a lot of fun because it is um, a pretty easy concept to go through. Let's talk about multiplying fractions. So if we open up this first flap, we have an example of a um, two fractions that need to be multiplied together. The great thing about multiplying fractions is that you, unlike when you add and subtract, you do not need to get a common denominator. So this first little line says, don't get a common denominator. What we can do is we can cross cancel if possible. And we'll talk about what that looks like. So if you can cross cancel, so you look at your crosses and see if you can divide by a number to reduce or to simplify that. That makes simplifying at the end a little bit easier if you decide to do that. Okay, and then we just multiply our numerator by our numerator and then multiply the denominator by the denominator. And the last thing is to simplify if needed. A fraction in its most simplest form is the correct answer. So let's look at the example that we have. I have 3 fourths times 6 fifteenths. If I look at this and I look at my crosses, I have 3 and 15 are crosses. If I divide 3 by 3, I can also divide 15 by 3, so I can cross cancel or cross reduce. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 15 divided by 3 is 5. I can look at my other crosses. 4 and 6 can both be divided by 2, so half of 4 is 2, half of 6 is 3. And then I'm just multiplying my numerators, so 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 5 is 10, and my answer is 5 tenths. Now, if we chose not to cross-cancel, I can just multiply my numerators and multiply my denominators, and then I will have to simplify. So 3 times 6 is 18, 4 times 5, I'm sorry, 4 times 15 is 60, so I have 18 sixtieths, and then I have to simplify. What can I divide by 18 and 60? I see that they're both even numbers, so I can divide by 2, but I also know that to get to 18, that's 3 times 6, so I'm going to divide my top and bottom by 6, and that is 3 over 10. That is in its simplest form. Notice I got the same answer whether I chose to cross cancel beforehand or I simplified afterwards. I have another example. This one is 3 and 1 half times 2 fifths. So sometimes our fractions will be mixed numbers. Before I can multiply this, my mixed number needs to become an improper fraction. You have notes on this, hopefully at the beginning of your INB. To do this, remember we have tx, we're going to multiply and add. So 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So I'd rewrite that as 7 over 2, and then times 2 over 5. If I chose to cross cancel, my 2 and my 2 can both be reduced down to 1 by dividing by 2. 7 and 5 cannot cross cancel, so then I can just multiply across. 7 times 1 is 7. 1 times 5 is 5, and I have 7 fifths. Now, 7 fifths is an improper fraction. Simplifying does mean including changing my improper fractions back into mixed numbers. So to do that, we would see how many sets of 5 go into 7. That's dividing. That's one time. I said take those 5 out, and I have 2 left over. So I would say that my improper fraction of 7 fifths becomes 1 whole from my 1, and then 2 out of 5. Okay, so there's a couple of examples for multiplying fractions. It's just multiplying numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. We do not have to have a common denominator. If I close that side, I'm going to look over at dividing. Dividing is a little bit different, but we can still do this very easily. Also, we do not need a common denominator, so we're going to say don't get a common denominator. What we do with dividing fractions is we take the reciprocal. It doesn't help that I don't have anything over here, so I might punch through my paper again. Uh, 
of the second fraction. So the reciprocal of this fraction, I'll show you what that looks like in a second. We're going to change division into multiplication. So we're going to make every division problem a multiplication problem. And then we multiply our numerators. We multiply our denominators. And the last step we always do is to simplify. So let's look like, let's see what that looks like using our example here. I have 3 eighths divided by 9 twelfths. We don't get a common denominator, but we need to take the reciprocal of the second fraction. We need to flip that second fraction. So I rewrite it. I'm going to rewrite the 3 eighths. That stays 3 eighths. And I'm going to take a flip, a reciprocal of this second number. So instead of 9 over 12, it becomes 12 over 9. And then my division becomes a multiplication problem. Sometimes we remember this by saying um, KFC, like Kentucky Fried Chicken, but it's really KCF, keep, change, flip. So I keep my first number, I change my division to multiplication, and I flip my second number. And then I can multiply. I can cross cancel if I choose to. I can reduce this 9 and 3. I can divide by 3. So that becomes 3. That becomes 1. 8 and 3. 12, I can divide by 4, because 4 times 2 and 4 times 3. Okay, and now I can multiply across. So 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. And that equals 1 half when we simplify by dividing by 3. Okay, another opportunity that we see here is whenever I have a whole number and a fraction, and I'm a dividing. And it doesn't matter where that whole number is in the place. This happens to be our dividend, and one-third is our divisor. So I would first need to change my whole number into a fraction. And I hope we can remember that to change a whole number into a fraction, I just put that whole number over 1. And that's a fraction. And then I, again, can keep change flip. So I keep 5 over 1, change division to multiplication, and flip or take the reciprocal of that second number. And then we just multiply across. 5 times 3 is 15. 1 times 1 is 1. And just like we have up here, any number over 1 is just the whole number. So this is an answer of 15. Okay, so now we've also talked about dividing fractions. It involves keep, change, flip, which is still using multiplication. So dividing fractions is actually multiplying the way that we do it. If you look on the opposite side, we do have our whisk. Make sure that you write a statement down for that. That is part of our work. And then I have two questions for you. I have 7 ninths times 3 eighths. And then I have 1 and 3 fourths divided by 2 thirds. I look forward to checking your answers soon. Thank you.